Hello viewers, so welcome to my channel. I'm Hashem Ali Khan. Last video, I have completed the theory of common size statement analysis. In this video, I'm going to explain you two problems on common size statement analysis. One problem will be common size income statement. The other problem will be common size balance sheet. In the last video, I have explained you the meaning of the term common, state, common size statement. It's a statement in which all the values in the financial statement will be expressed as a percentage of the base value. So in income statement, the base will be taken as total sales or total revenue. In balance sheet, we take the total assets as the base. So we calculate the percentage of all other items on the basis of sales or on the basis of total assets. In this way, we convert the absolute figures into percentages for all the values in the financial statements. That is called common size statement. Now already I have explained you the importance, advantages and disadvantages of common size statement analysis in the last video. So uh, if you have not watched, I suggest you go to the playlist of my channel, select the subject accounting for management, select the uh, videos of common size statement analysis, be perfect regarding the concept, then you can easily understand the theory. So before starting, I expect my viewers to have a printout of the problems which I have given in the link under my description. Always keep ready, take the screenshot of the solutions of the first two problems, then I'll explain. Now, see the first problem. From the following income statement of Ajit Limited, prepare common size statement for the year ended 31st December 2009-2008. So last year 2008, current year 2009. So we make the columns 2008 and 2009. So we are required to prepare common size income statement. The data is given revenue from sales, cost of goods sold, gross profit, operating expense, general expense, selling expense, total operating expense, operating income before tax, tax related to operations, net income. The complete format is given. The same format I am copying down here, but two more columns. The columns regarding percentages, that is not given in the problem. In the problem, amounts are given, percentages I am going to calculate, we have to calculate, right? So this is the format. This is the first problem on common size income statement. Concentrate now. So Ajit Limited common size income statement for the year ended 31st December 2008 and 2009. The first two broad columns you make. One broad column for 2008 and another column 2009. Then sub columns. In 2008, two sub columns, amount and percentage. In 2009 also two columns, amount and percentage. The first column will be particulars. That's it. Now, same to same, whatever is given in the problem, same thing I have copied down here. Revenue from sales, then less cost of goods sold will get gross profit. Amount columns. In the problem 2008, see the column 2008, the amounts are 95,000, 60,800, 34, 200. And for 2009, 1 lakh, 65,000, 35,000. Whatever is given in the problem, same thing I have taken the amounts, right? We got the gross profit minus operating expenses. The operating expenses are given general expenses, selling expenses. These two are called operating expense. The total operating expenses are 26,600 for 2008 and 30,000 for 2009. Only amounts I am taking from the problem. Percentages, how to calculate, I will tell you. The total operating expenses, next A minus B. Gross profit minus total operating expenses. We will get operating income before tax. Operating income before tax. A minus B. So 34,200 minus 26,600. You will get 7,600. This is the net income before tax for 2008. Similarly for 2009, 35,000 minus 30,000. 5,000 is the operating income before tax. From this tax related to operations, the tax of the business, business activities, then it is given in the problem. 
last year tax 2280 current year tax 1500 deduct the tax so 7600 minus 2280 5320 is the net income of 2008 similarly 5000 minus 1500 3500 is the net income for 2009 so whatever is given in the problem, same amounts I have taken. Now we have to calculate the percentages. Remember, in income statement, the base is net sales. So net sales will be taken as 100%. So here, revenue from sales, we can call it as net sales or we can call it as revenue from sales. It will be taken as 100%. It will be taken as 100%. Now express all other items as a percentage of sales. Example, cost of goods sold. How much is the cost of goods sold? 60,800. Now we need the percentage. How to calculate numerator 60,800, denominator 95,000. So 60,800 divided by 95,000 into 100, you will get 64. While watching the video, I suggest you keep a notebook, calculator, pen ready. Whenever I say something, immediately you calculate and check. And if a new point comes, immediately note it down. Then only you can be able to get a good command on this topic. So 60,800 divided by 95,000 into 164%. That is the percentage of cost of goods sold. Now gross profit. Gross profit 34,200. This you keep it in numerator. 34,200 uh, 34, numerator, denominator sales 95,000 in 200. Always denominator will take 95,000. Numerator will take all these values, right? So 34,200 divided by 95,000 in 200, 36%. 15,200 divided by 95,000 in 200. 11,400 divided by 95,000 in 200, 12%. Like this, all these values you keep in numerator, denominator 95,000 in 200, you will get these percentages, right? Now, same strategy we have to apply for 2009 also. The revenue from sales should be taken as 100%. I have taken 100 here, right? Now, we express all other values as a percentage of sales. Take the individual value in the numerator, denominator you take the sale value. What is the sale value? 1 lakh. So 65,000 divided by 1 lakh into 100, 65. 35,000 divided by 1 lakh into 100, 35 percent. 16,000 divided by 1 lakh into 100, 16. 14,000 divided by 1 lakh into 100, 14. Like this, you take all values in numerator, denominator 1 lakh into 100. You will get these percentages. That's all. In this way, we make the common size income statement. That's all. So here, for your convenience, I have shown you few points how to calculate the percentages. COGS divided by revenue into 100. Then GP divided by revenue into 100. This is just an illustration how calculations have been made. That's it. This is the end of first problem. It is simply asking you to make the income statement, com common size income statement. So I have prepared. It is not asking you to give the interpretation. In the next two problem, it is asking interpretation. Now I give. Following are the two balance sheets of X limited and Y limited as on 31st March 2009. So here inter-firm comparison. Two companies are there. Previous problem intra-firm. Within the same firm, one year with another year. But here one company with another company. X limited and Y limited. So assets are given cash, debtor, stock, prepaid expense, other current assets, fixed assets, total assets. The total assets of X limited 20 lakh, the total assets of Y limited 20 lakh 50 thousand. Liabilities and capital, sundry creditors, other current liability, fixed liability, capital. The total liabilities are 20 lakh and 20 lakh 50 thousand. From the above data, prepare the common size balance sheet and comment. So here, not only we have to make the common size balance sheet, but also we have to give the interpretation or comment, right? First of all, first time we are going to make the common size balance sheet. See here, common size balance sheet of X limited and Y limited as on 31st March 2009. Two broad columns we make. The first broad column X limited, second broad column Y limited. Two companies. 
in x limited to sub columns in y limited to sub columns amount column percentage amount percentage here also amount percentage amounts are given in the problem percentages we have to calculate right first of all i will copy down all the assets and liabilities given in the problem so in the problem, assets are given cash, data, stock, prepaid expense, other current assets, fixed assets, total assets. Simply, I have taken the same thing, whatever is given in the problem. I have copied down all the assets. Amounts. Respective amounts of X limited and Y limited. X limited amounts, Y limited amounts I have copied. Now, the liabilities and capital. In the problem, it is given sundry credits, other current liability, fixed liability, capital, total liabilities. So format, whatever is given in the problem, same thing I have taken, same amounts I have taken. Now we have to calculate the percentages. In balance sheet, the base will be taken total assets. The total assets will be taken as 100%. So here total assets are 20 lakh. So I have made it 100%. This total assets will be taken as 100%. Now individual values should be taken as a percentage of total assets. Individual values. What are the individual values here? Cash. How much is the cash? 8 lakh. So 8 lakh in numerator. Denominator you take 20 lakh. So 8 lakh by 20 lakh into 100. You will get 40%. Then 2 lakh divided by 20 lakh into 100. You will get 10%. 2 lakh 50,000 divided by 20 lakh into 100. 12.5. So all these values you keep it in numerator. And 20 lakh, you take it in denominator, multiply by 100, you get this percentage. Same strategy you have to adopt for liability and capital. So assets, uh, balance sheet, assets will be equal to liabilities. So here total assets are 20 lakh. So total liability is also 20 lakh. So here also I am taking 100%. Now express all other liabilities and capital as a percentage of total liability. That means what is the sundry grid loss? 3,75,000 take 3,75,000 in the numerator 3,75,000 divided by 20 lakh into 100 18.75 then second one 4 lakh divided by 20 lakh into 100 20% 575 5,75,000 divided by 20 lakh into 100 20.75 like this so we have calculated the percentages for X limited similar calculation we have to make for Y limited the Y limited total assets are 20,50,000 this 20 lakh 50,000 is the base that will be kept in denominator, right? 100%. Take the base as 100%. Now take all the individual values in the numerator and base in the denominator. Example 9 lakh. So 9 lakh divided by 20 lakh 50,000 into 100, 43.9. Similarly, 2 lakh 50,000 divided by 20 lakh 50,000 into 100, 12.2. 3 lakh. Divided by 20 lakh 50,000 into 100, 14.63. Like this, you calculate all percentages. Same strategy for liability. The liability 20 lakh 50,000, 100% I have taken. Now take individual value 5 lakh 25,000 divided by 20 lakh 50,000 into 100, 25.61. 5 lakh 5,000 divided by 20 lakh 50,000 into 100, 24.63. That's all. This is the method of making the common size balance sheet. Right? So easy, very easy calculations are there. So after making the calculations, it is asking you to give the interpretation also in this problem. Previous problem it was not asked. Now it is asking how to give the interpretation. Comparison. We are comparing X limited with Y limited. The first interpretation, the current assets of Y limited are slightly higher than X limited. If you make the comparison, see here, these are the current assets, cash, data, stock, prepaid expense, other current assets. These five items are current assets. Now compare the current assets of X limited and Y limited, 8 lakh, 9 lakh, 2 lakh, 250, 253, 1 lakh, 125, 50,000, 75,000. So what do you see? The absolute figures are more in Y limited. In other words, the current assets of Y limited are more than the current assets of X limited. Now compare the percentages. In percentage term also, here 40%, here 43.9%. 10% 
So what is the observation here? The current assets of Y limited are higher than that of X limited, both in terms of absolute figures and also in terms of percentages. So first of all, I have to get the current assets of Y limited are slightly higher than X limited in absolute terms and in percentage terms, the current assets are more in Y limited. That is the first observation. Second, the proportion of fixed assets to total assets is higher in X limited. Now compare the fixed asset. Fixed asset X limited 6 lakh, Y limited 4 lakh. That means the proportion of fixed asset is more in case of X limited. So the observation is X limited has invested more in fixed asset and less in current asset. It is opposite in case of Y limited. Y limited have invested more in current asset and less in fixed asset comparatively. Now, it appears that X limited can be able to manage the business with lower working capital and more investment in fixed asset. The first observation from this is X limited has invested more amount in fixed asset and running the business with less working capital. Whereas Y limited is keeping more amount of working capital and less amount invested in fixed assets. That is the first observation. Now the current liability of Y limited are slightly higher than that of X limited. Now compare the current liability. The current liability are sundry creditors, other current liability. 375, 525, it is more. 4 lakh, 5 lakh, 5000. So both the current liabilities are more in case of Y limited. In absolute terms and also in percentage. 18.75, 25.61, 20%, 24.63. So one observation, the current liability of Y limited are slightly higher than X limited, both in terms of absolute figures and also in terms of percentages. Now, the fixed liability are slightly higher in Y limited. Now, see the fixed liability. 5,75,000, 6,20,000, again it is more. 28.75, 30.25. So slightly, the fixed liabilities are also more in Y limited. The capital investment of X limited is greater than that of Y limited. X limited has invested in capital 6,50,000, more capital. Here it is less capital. That means the owner's fund is more in case of X limited and less amount is fixed liabilities. The opposite is there in Y limited. Y limited capital investment is less, but the long -term fixed liabilities are more. That means in other words, Y limited is more levered. That means it is having more leverage, means more debt funds, less owners fund and more debt fund in case of Y limited. Whereas opposite in case of X limited, more owners fund and less debt fund. Now, it appears that Y limited is more levered than X limited as fixed liabilities are more. The overall financial position of both the companies are very much similar. If you compare the overall financial position, there is no not much difference between the financial position of X limited and Y limited. There is not much difference, slight difference is there. Lastly, the financial position of both the companies appears to be satisfactory. If, if, if you want to find out the financial position, the combined effect of all assets and liability, both the companies have a good financial position. In this way, you have to give the interpretation in exams if it is asking you to give the comment on this common size statement. That's all. So in this video, two problems I have explained you about common size income statement, one problem and common size balance sheet in the next problem. So in the next video, Inshallah, two more problems I am going to solve on this common size statement and that will be the end of this chapter financial statement analysis. So if you are satisfied with my lecture, give a like to the video. I am getting the views but most of the viewers are not subscribing my channel. I suggest you. It gives me more motivation, better and better, more videos I will upload if you subscribe. Subscriptions are increasing very uh, slowly. 
please do come forward subscribe if you are satisfied with my lecture inshallah we'll continue the next problem in the next video